I'll be right back. What's up everyone? I don't know if this is going to be like an educational video or if it's just going to be me tying stuff. All depends. I guess if you have questions you could ask them. But other than that I'm going to be tying up 10 marabou heads on a 332nd ounce head. This is the worm nose mold from Do It. They're all black. They're going to be black with blue flash. Oh yeah, and also I made this pegboard at 515. So I was doing that for the last like hour. Looks a lot better than an ugly curtain. Anyways, I'll get started on these. Marabou jigs, this is actually for somebody. But I figured I'd do a video at the same time. I don't know if you wanted bait keepers on here. Should probably check. So can I check my email? So that's gonna <clears throat> take a little bit longer, but that's fine. Um. Also, I have a an open bag of marabou, but I'm going to start with. A brand new bag of extra select because I want to see how many jigs I can make with one bag but honestly I, I think I've made 19 before so looking at probably half of this bag depending on the quality will get used up which isn't bad so the bags probably five or six dollars and you can make close to 20 jigs off of that so some people think that's expensive, but it's not to me. I think more of these feathers are usable than if you got, you know, a lower quality where you would throw away like 25% of what's in the bag. Hey buddy. So for the flash, what I've always done was I would put three layers of marabou on and then tie the flash in next to the head so then the flash would be on the outside. <clears throat> so this time I want to try to put two layers of marabou on and then the flash and then the final marabou layer and I think it might look better. It might keep the flash like you know tucked in a little more. But it's for somebody else and I'm doing an experiment at the same time so think I think it's gonna work out also I was listening to like music on my guitar amp through my phone and it was a blast of music and then all of a sudden it's like dead silent now so kind of weird so what we need is marabou I got blue flashaboo and I got blue crystal flash so this is like the darker blue um, there's a couple different shades of it I got a message here. Hold on a second. Yes. So yeah, that's all you need is some hell bass. You need, well, do what you want, but I use crystal flash and flashaboo. And this is extra limp flashaboo. So this stuff is like, it's not really stiff at all. 
I don't know who makes this. But yeah, there's the label. It's got a white label. So we should probably start tying bait keepers on here. I'm going to use Vivis 100D if I have it. Otherwise, yeah, I have it. It says G01 on it. I don't know what that means, but I'm still kind of like, I'll go to a fly shop and not know what the hell all the letters on thread means. But I know this stuff is really good. And if you tie a lot, you kind of form an opinion on what you like. So for the bait keepers, I use 30 pound mono, the big game. This is like 13 bucks. So there you go. You got, you got bait keepers for the rest of your life. So I use a combination of hair scissors and these fine point scissors. Doesn't really matter. It's all personal preference. You're not using like the wrong scissors unless you're doing like tons of volume of jigs. I've cut hair with the fine point and I've <clears throat> cut thread with the hair scissors before. It doesn't matter. What's up guys? So I take a piece of mono and I fold it in half. And the two tag ends I like to have even because that's gonna make it easier to tie the very end of it and to cut it off at the end. You honestly would probably have to tie a few of them to kind of understand what I'm saying. But yeah, <clears throat> if the customer wants bait keepers, it adds probably like a minute per jig. If they plan on using plastics, then it's kind of, I don't know, it's a big difference. So I'm just tying. I also use a lot of thread on all my jigs, but all my jigs are like super tough. And I can't really tell because I don't know what a lot of thread is. Because I've just how I've always done it. But, so it's basically done. I just have to cut the tag ends off and cut that loop. My dog's going crazy next to me right now. So that's pretty much it for the bait keeper. I just have to put Sally Hansen on it. I also decided to drink a ton of caffeine and not eat. So it should be fun. So then I just cut where I, I kind of have a spot where I know. And then that loop end flies somewhere on the carpet. And then you have like this perfect it's really it's stiff but you could bend it the plastic's gonna stay on there i've done a ton of videos and explain this but it's got like a fork pretty much all you need especially if you're gonna put a piece of chunk on there like a little chunk piece of senko or whatever and also you could use i've used loctite super glue and i've used sally hansen so i'm gonna use sally hansen this time doesn't I don't, I don't see that it needs to be like super super durable for marabou jigs and also for i don't know if my camera's at a good angle or not <clears throat> here so the the do it worm nose has these this bar which is like the main reason why i bought this mold because it had the 90 degree hook slot and then it had the barb and to me the barb is huge for Anyone that's like tying thread on their stuff, like the bar makes it so much easier to keep that thread from sliding. And I and also the bar kind of looks like this, and I file them so like it's more ninety degrees, so you're not like threading into the barb. It's kind of hard to explain if you haven't done it. So I kind of lock the thread down. So all I'm gonna do. I kind of messed that up. But all I'm gonna do is tie three layers of marabou and some flash. I'm gonna do that 10 times. And yeah, so I peel, I peel the marabou off the stem. It's, to me, it's easier. I don't know if 
fishing with Weensy. What's up, dude? So that guy probably ties Mary Blue Jigs better than me. But I kind of eyeball it to where I want <clears throat> past the hook, hook bend. I mean, I don't have to talk and explain this. <laughs> but if I wasn't, I would just be, you know, flying through this. But if I could help one person, that's cool. So pulling it off the stem, I don't know, it's, you have to do it to kind of get a hang of it, but once you do, it's not like hard at all. And I cut, I cut the length before I put it on the jig. You have to kind of like know that that hair is not going anywhere. So you have to kind of cinch it hard. Cause some people put it on and they cut the, ta the tail off like bucktail even I cut the bucktail before I even put it on I think it's just like a n nice and neat kind of OCD thing honestly that's just kind of how I like doing it at, also like at the end I'll kind of like pull the hair or the feather depending on what jig it is and I don't pull any hair out so that shows that that thread's holding it well and for these you have to i mean for me i try to not <clears throat> i try to be careful to not build the thread up so much so you don't have to like cover the feather completely with the thread before you go to the next chunk you only have to put in like a couple wraps and then you'll get the rest of the wraps while you get the other chunks in. If you understand what the hell I just said. And also you could just tie like a tie a knot to cinch it down. It's unnecessary sometimes. So for each layer I could super glue it and I'm not going to because I'm I haven't had an issue with it before. And I'm confident enough to not do it, so if I wasn't confident, I would glue it. So I'm like pulling hair, pulling a little of these loose pieces out. But it's pretty, pretty solid. So I'm going to do a second layer, and then I'm going to put the flash in, and then the last layer. So I've been talking to some other bait makers that tie with <clears throat> bucktail and stuff. I think it would be kind of a cool video to do. Just like shoot the shit about bucktail for like an hour. Because I have tons of questions about it. And I think the same could be said for Maribou. You know. I have like three people that tie with Maribou a lot. And just have a conversation. I think that would be a cool video. So. This is basically how the whole video is going to be. I'm just going to keep doing this over and over. And I've noticed too with bucktail, like I'll try to cut off larger pieces of bucktail to cover more of the jig to try to speed up the process. And it honestly is worse for the, it's worse for the jig, how it looks and the quality of the ties. So you have to kind of have to cut smaller pieces, at least the last two days I've been tying bucktail like all day. I learned a ton, but slow and small is better because you're always going to try to find a way to like shortcut things, but try to keep, you know, keep quality. But with that, I couldn't find a way to shortcut it. I had to go slow and cut small chunks out. And there's like a ton of ton of stuff about bucktail that I I did not know about that somebody thankfully reached out to me and showed me some things and I had a bunch of like questions written down and I thought I was like like I had all the questions and he just dropped a bomb on me of information like breaking the bucktail in pieces and stuff like that 
because I kind of looked at it as like the inside part and the outside part. I don't know if anyone ties the bucktail in the chat, but the mi the middle section's really soft on most of them, and the outside's more of like a drier, coarse, non-greasy <clears throat> part of the bucktail. So there's like good good parts, bad parts. There's good tails and bad tails. It's just like ridiculous. So I have crystal flash. I usually take a piece of crystal flash and cut a piece of the flashaboo. And one of them, it looks like the crystal flash I cut in half. So one piece of flash, one piece of crystal flash, will work for both sides. And I have flashaboo. I could like pre-stage this stuff out. This is like how I've done it because I just kind of just chill out, make jig. So for the flash boo, I'm going to have to cut two pieces out for every jig. And for the crystal flash, I'm cutting it in half. So I have a piece of crystal flash and a piece of flash boo. I'm pinching it in the middle. And that's going to give me tons of, not tons, it's going to give me enough length to where I'm not like worried about if it's going to be long enough. So I tie it in towards the middle, and then I pull with my hands towards the hook, those four tags, and I try to keep it, you know, 90 degrees to the hook eye, and try not mess up. And you could spread them out a little bit, but I kind of bunch them all together, so each side is like a bunched together flash. That makes sense. And then you could cut it at the end or cut it like now. I cut it now. I'm actually going to cut it a little bit past the tips of the feathers. What's up, Sean? Got stuff for you tomorrow. So I do the same thing on the other side. So maybe after this one, I won't have to keep. I won't have to repeat everything I just did. Maybe I'll come up with some things to share as I go, but pretty much the gist of it. It makes a really good marigou jig. I like the 90 degree head hook eye. So these are owner 5318, I believe. I don't want to get that mixed up with that <clears throat> Ned head hook. So a couple cinches just to keep the thread from sliding. And I'm going to cut this length like I did the other half, a little bit past the tips. Because the stuff's going to like splay out a little bit. I mean, there's no right or wrong way, I don't think. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a good experiment because I'm putting a layer over that. And I wonder how much is going to hide that flash. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do one jig this way if it looks bad and then the rest <laughs> with the flash on the very outside. If Instagram was cool I'd have like music playing and stuff, but it's not. So I'm gonna peel off a chunk. That's how I peel it off. Then you'll have this stem that I just kind of bunch up and pinch the stem. Nice, you do. So, like what I'm seeing now is like... I got another idea too. So if I just put that over, it looks like the flash is only peeking out the back. And I don't know if... I want to do that, or if I want the flash, you know, completely on the outside. I might go outside on the next one, but we'll see. I'll show you guys at the end. But another, another thing I thought about, too, is I can keep these tips the same length as the other two layers. Because I kind of did the first two layers with the tips kind of at the same length. So if I kept the same length, the marabou is going to look like a cone. 
and the tips are going to be the same, but if I layer it, I don't know how to explain it, but I could layer the, the last layer a tiny bit shorter, and I'll give you a little bit different look. You could try to like visualize that. But I'm going to go a little shorter. We'll see what happens. I already cut it to length. I'm not putting it on there and then cutting it afterwards. Regardless, it's going to look pretty good. Then you got to have a kind of an idea of how wide you want the collar on here. So if you tie a bunch, you kind of know. So in this case, I'm not building the thread up that much. So I only do like a few wraps. Because you could always put a ton more wraps in at the end. Like hard wraps. So that that feather's not gonna come out. And also the thread helps a ton. If you're using either that flat wax thread or this GSP, you're gonna be fine. But I've, I've been trying a ton of different threads same brand like Vivas threads that aren't this GSP stuff and the thread builds up a lot because it's browned and it doesn't lay flat and it doesn't doesn't look that nice either like when you're finishing up the jig head your thread wraps should look like like one big solid piece and with that round stuff, it looks, you could see like the strands and the thread at the collar. So yeah, this probably needs like two more chunks of marabou and it should be done. I'm going to be doing Sally Hansen as well for this. It's a little bit shorter. Bass probably don't give a shit. So you don't want to just take a chunk of marabou and, you know, go chunk after chunk around it. You want to lay it down and then kind of splay it with your fingers. And that will give you, that will cover more, cover more area. Plus that layer you just put on, it's not like a chunk, chunk, chunk. It's like splayed out. It's a thin layer. So, the, so I'm putting in three thin layers of marabou. I can make three thin layers or I can make, what was I going to say? I can make two layers of marabou look bigger than three layers of marabou if I do it wrong. Oh, my wait time. Yeah, so I've been kind of, maybe like a month or so, but I kind of put a pause on custom stuff just because I've noticed like in the like it's been like legit stressful for me like in the last month I've probably pulled like three all-nighters just to get stuff done because I hate making people wait and I hate saying no to people and recently I've said no to like three or four people and it kind of bugs me but I also have a two-year-old and another and I have a real like a full-time job I mean, it's cool, but sometimes, like, I don't have a chance to create stuff because I'm making stuff for people, but I don't, I don't, like, dislike that, but if you notice, like, my store is empty all the time because I don't have time to put stuff on there, it would be cool if I had, like, 20 hair jigs on there all the time, if I had every size and every color med head on there all the time that would be cool if i had a tons of marabou colors on there in different sizes that would be cool but right now i'm just kind of i'm sticking with it like i kind of reached a point where i was like do i want to keep doing this and what can i do to maximize you know, to, to have fun with it still because I'm not, 
fishing, I haven't fished as much as I have this last past season that I'm used to fishing. And like other hobbies I don't really have time for. Donovan, what's up? So probably not the best time to order 500 jigs. Probably not the best time. I mean, it might take a long time. So this is a dot. This is finished. I put Sally Hansen on it. I layered the last layer, and I think it looks pretty cool. The flash is coming out the outside, so is that the look, Mike Avino? <laughs> so that's the blue flash behind a layer. So I could do that, or I could do it where I'm tying that flash by the collar so the whole flash strand is showing. So yeah, I'll, I don't know if I want to do it this way. Is Sean in the chat? What's up, Donovy? Donovy, look at this pegboard I made today. It's pretty cool, huh? Donovy's my sister. She lives in Pennsylvania. Anyways. So we can make nine more of these. I like the layer, the layering I did on it. Cause it like splays out more. It's kind of hard to explain like in the water, but like if you had this upside down in the water, like a, kind of like a Ned rig, the feathers aren't gonna be like, like a V like this. It's gonna be more of like a wider cone. You see what Maribu I use extra select hairline. It's not hard to find. It's like five, six bucks. Last, it lasts pretty, I mean, I did 19 jigs with one bag of the 332 ounce heads, the worm nose heads I'm using right now. I got 19 jigs made with that. So I'm just gonna start the next one. I could talk at the same time. So yeah, throw the jig in. So far I'm like the only person that I've seen that puts their jig heads in their vise like this, but that's how I've always done it. I've never tied a fly. I don't watch fly tying videos, but this hasn't failed me, so that's how I do it. So bait keeper, next. Yeah, drawing a blank here. So I'll just tie jigs. That's all I do. Also, I have a Griffin Odyssey Spider 2 vise. It's a pretty common vise. I think it's like 75 bucks. So you don't have to like kill yourself to get one. Yeah, there's so much stuff that I think about when I'm tying like like the last two days I was tying bucktail and I was writing down questions and like stuff I could ask people that actually do it. So I have a little notebook I wrote a bunch of questions in, which would be cool to have a live stream discussion. And I think I got the people I want to get on there on board, but we'll see how that goes. But yeah, the bucktail jigs that I just posted kicked my ass really bad. I was like using a hair, like I don't tie with bucktail a lot. <clears throat> I tie with, like, is that just shot at me? I tie with uh, the deer belly hair a lot, which is like shorter. And it's like, it's more hollow, so you could, when you cinch down, it like really cinches down and doesn't go anywhere, if you can kind of visualize that, but it's so much easier to manage. And with the bucktail, that's a pain in the ass, like, some of the stuff is like really greasy, and if you put in the hair stacker, which is this thing, to get all the tips of the feather, or tips of the hair even, so it looks good on the jig, and now it's cutting like, a marker size chunk of bucktail off, like a marker diameter amount of bucktail off the bucktail. And I'd have like 
15 strands of hair tips to work with at the end because it was so bad. But after a couple jigs, I was doing pretty well. I kind of like it now. I have... Ugh. I had a bunch of bucktail when I first started tying because I was trying to experiment. So I had all these colors sitting in my basement. And I'm like, I'm not going to use that stuff. I, I use the, the deer belly stuff. This is way better. So I got a bunch of deer belly stuff, a bunch of colors. And then I was tying with bucktail for a while. And I kind of like, it was kind of like discovering a new tool I could play with. So on my craw jigs, I might be using bucktail on those instead of deer belly hair. A different technique to tie it in but definitely takes longer to get the hair prepped before you even start tying it in um yeah so i was like grabbing my hair stacker full of hair and like slamming it on my desk and stuff on my desk would fly all over the place so then i started moving to this shelf next to me and I was like I smashed the hell out of it like clearly I don't know how to use it right um and I was leaving dents in the in the in the table so then I had to put more cork on it so I probably was slamming it <clears throat> too hard what's up Brennan I got plans for the uh those new do it do it molds, uh, not molds, but the new paint that came out. I guess as soon as I got the paint, I was, my plans are to make the most badass, like, hair jigs with those paint jobs. But I have not had time to do that yet. So I haven't taken any orders in, like, three, four weeks. And I'm still not caught up. I think I have like four or five more orders left and then I'll be able to just do what I want but sometimes I'll have I like getting orders done and out the door but sometimes I can't with my situation sometimes so here I doubled up this layer of marabou because it's really thin and it would finish, it finished the feather off, so I just wanted to get it done. So yeah, I'm matching the tips with the tips on there already. This should be the last one of this layer. It's like hard to see. Okay. So there's one layer. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the outside flash toward at the collar, and then I could compare, and everybody could see what it looks like and what the difference is. I'm probably gonna layer it the same though because I kind of liked the way that other one looked. And it's not something I've always done with the layering. It's just like something I found out. Like, oh, you could layer these, and it looks different. If there's like a video out there that shows you what layering mar marabou does and how it looks i'm also doing a collaboration with someone it's gonna be cool i'm not gonna say anything else but yeah if you're a bait maker in the chat or if you're watching this later I think collaborations would be cool. I don't know how you would do a collaboration with jig makers though. But it'd be cool. So I'm gonna go same length. This stuff's gonna be like a wet sock in the water anyways, so it's not like it matters that much. 
her sliders are like matching or not. It's gonna be sad when like I upload this video and it says I took like an hour to tie 10 jigs, 10 marabou jigs. Usually, like, listening to, like, YouTube or music or something. I don't know if that makes me faster, but... If I'm doing a live, it's dead quiet. And you get in trouble if you play music, I think. So, calling that good for layer two. I'm going to put one more layer in and I'll put the flash in last. I think, uh, in my opinion, it looks better. So we'll do that. I'll show you at the end too, like how much feather I have left of this pack. But I'm guessing half of the pack will be left. If I'm doing my math correctly. So I did. So you're not guaranteed, like, awesome marabou either if you get a pack of this extra select stuff. Like, I've taken pictures of a pack that had, like, a bunch of, like, nasty, like, I don't know, like, globs of stuff in it, and it, like, clumped up the feather. And it was, like, 75 of the pack was just destroyed from that. But overall, I think if you bought 10 packs of extra select and 10 packs of select or 10 packs of like Cabela brand stuff or whatnot, I think overall for what I have experienced in the hairline extra select overall will give you the best bang for your buck and the best quality stuff to last you a long time. So until I find something better, this is what I got. And I did double check to make sure I had enough. I only needed, I only need like a half a bag, but I got like three or four bags. So it should be good. I'm not going to run out of materials on stream. So like... So like, I've been throwing away the tips of these after I've been pulling them. Like, I'm not going to throw that on the jig, but, I mean, you could keep that for like, like those crosshair jigs I make. You could just throw that like, on the collar and it shows up well, even for being a little bit of feather. But I'm not going to be like st stacking a pile of that crap around because I have... I have a tons of, I have tons of like Ziploc bags full of pieces of marabou that I didn't use because they weren't long enough. I got pieces of like rabbit zonker that are too short to make a claw with. So I take pieces of that to make hot spots on jigs. And I just have, I think you start out throwing away a ton of stuff until you realize that it can be used so then that's when you would start keeping it like like bucktail i've been i realize i i threw a lot of that stuff away you should just be left with like just the hide when you're done with it and i was just like using the middle like the good quality part of the bucktail and then chucking the rest <clears throat> I'm using like both pairs of scissors while doing this. So it's weird, like you're holding the feather with your with like my left hand, and then you're not using your right hand. Your the thread is basically your right hand that you have to control. So 
little bit short here. So I got like one more chunk after this and then we'll tie the flash in. I'm not trying to rush either because I don't want the jigs to look like shit. Which they don't so far. I've only done one. But. So like when you're tying, you tie in X material. It feels like satisfying to cover that material up before you pick up another piece of material. And for this, you probably could do that if you had the right thread, but you don't need to. And it's kind of hard to, you know, not do that. You also could put like four layers on if you wanted, or you could put two layers on if you wanted. So I actually took a piece of marabou and it was smaller than the gap I had left, but I was able to splay it out, like splay thin it out to cover that gap so that it worked out. So now we're going to cut two pieces of flash boo and get a piece of crystal flash and cut it in half. I have to do this for every jig, which is fine. It's the way we got to do it. I also ordered a bunch of Tackle Warehouse stuff today, which I didn't need. about right. Half the stuff in my wall is not even been hasn't even seen water yet. So this wall that's behind me I put up like two hours ago and it pretty much thinned out like the locker behind me and my basement a little bit. And the fact that there's not even hair or feathers up there kind of shows you how much stuff I got. So that is what it would look. Well, I'll show you a close up after after I finish the jig of what it looks like with the flash on the outside, which is how I've been making my Maribu jigs forever. And I like hold this up because I have a computer screen here. And an ugly curtain that makes it easier for me to look at the flash. So that's why I'm holding it up. So yeah, if I was using like a round thread or a thicker thread, I'd be like battling this whole time with, you know, don't try to wrap, don't try to bring the thread up so high and you know don't try to wrap so much per chunk because you don't want it to build up because if your thread builds up too much the thread's gonna want to slide down towards the hook and your whole jig's ruined and all your materials are ruined I mean you could quick tie it and then fish it and it might work but to me it's like the same thing as like throwing an interception in the fourth quarter. It's like you had a chance to finish and then you, you choked. But in this case, since I'm using good thread, I don't have to worry about that. I could just tie and not worry about it. Like I'm not even getting close to being high on my thread. So like I was getting that with my bucktail too, because it's I don't tie with it that much, so my thread is getting high on me. So this one's done. Looks good. So yeah, I think this is the this is the play here. So I have so I tied the flash on the outside, but it not necessarily is on the outside, like it cuts through the feather a little bit. So to me, you know, if you put your you just brush it once. Half of that flash is like embedded into the feather. So yeah, I leave the flash a little bit longer than the um, 
marabou. So I guess it, you could kind of make a tail out of it, or whoever my customer is can trim it if they wanted to. So better to be long than short. So what I do with like silicone jigs, I'll try to leave the skirt long so they could just trim it if they wanted to finesse cut it. Yeah, we're on jig number three, three of 10. And I kind of go all the way to the hook point when I put the thread down for the bait keeper. And like midway between where I stopped and the lead is kind of where I'll, uh, where the bait keeper will start, start to go up. I think I'm explaining it right. Oh, is this taking too long to tie a jig, do you think? See, I'll tie it on the bottom. I don't think it matters. It's a lot easier for me to tie it on the back because you don't have that hook point in your way. So with this, you can, you know, cinch it down pretty hard because this stuff will ro rotate on you. So then I clump it up under the loop part so that the loop part can, you know, you know, get pushed up when it's tied in. So it's not laying flat, it's like pushed up a little bit. So those, <clears throat> so that loop is up like that by itself. And that, it's not laying down. So honestly, I could just do like two wraps, but I do like six to 10 wraps. Not hard. So I could cut the tag on the loop right now, but I'm going to start the thread on the piece of lead now. Doesn't matter. Sometimes I just change it up just to be different, to not be repetitive. Cut the tag end of the thread. Cut the tag end of the mono with these giant hair scissors, which isn't the best thing. Cut the loop end. I got a perfect bait keeper. Throw some Sally Hansen on it. Throw the start in the first layer of the feathers. So that's not going anywhere. It's going to hold the plastic pretty good. If you wanted to add plastic. Oh, it is. So now, gotta get another stem. Thought about drinking too. It didn't work out. I don't think I have alcohol anyways. So I'll just stick to caffeine. Play a drinking game between each marabou jig. So there's like techniques too when you're ripping it off like sometimes you'll get more stem than you want sometimes you'll get like feathers that are not good so you have to determine if you want to use it or not sometimes you can if it's like the bottom layer or the hidden layer because you'll get a bunch of like full length and a bunch of half length tips in a pinch so you can't, so the bottom of that chunk is going to be thick, but the tip of it's going to be thin. That happens. Sometimes I just throw that away. Or you can save it for like, I don't know, hybrid stuff, hybrid jigs. I, I just use like new stuff all the time. Like saving material on the side is just like, it's just hoarding for me. Like my workspace is cleaner if I just throw the stuff away now. And also like, 
when I'm tying marabou, I like the thread to be towards the head, like a slope. I don't want it to be like, you know, I don't build the thread up quick. I try to keep it sloped. And I think you have to like tie your own, tie by yourself to kind of understand why makes it easier. I'm going to double up this next layer because it's going to finish this stem. And if I double it up, I'm going to be able to splay the layer out better. Not that I need it because this layer only needs a tiny bit of feather, but it's fine if you put a little bit more. Just put a little bit less on the next. Pretty exciting, huh? Saturday night, that's what we do. <clears throat> so layer one's done. I just put a couple hard wraps in and then make sure that I'm sloping down. I could explain it now, like if, you, if you're sloping towards the head, your next layer is not gonna slide, the feather's not gonna slide into the head it's gonna stay in the same spot because <clears throat> there's a slope. Yep, we're gonna do three layers in the flash last. So like, there's a long side and a short side. This whole like, from here down I'm gonna chuck even though I could use this like on a craw hair jig or something. Like, I'm not gonna just, I don't know. You could say it's wasteful, but I'm not gonna like start making piles of that crap. I honestly am buying a new desk, the same as this one, to double my space because I, I just have so much crap. I'd rather just like use material, use more material than try to be super efficient and be messy. Yeah, so I kind of like lay the thread down where I want the feather to stay, but I'm like lightly wrapping around and then when I've gone around that chunk a couple times, then I'll cinch it down hard. So you don't have to cinch it down hard with your first wrap. Because that'll make it slide. Maybe. I could just be making everything up. So, so not really much else I could think of. as like technique I guess like the more you tie the more you know what's gonna happen with the material you're using while you're tying with thread and different thread gives you different lets you manipulate the material differently too So yeah, this is an order for somebody. As much as I'd like to do a giveaway, I don't know what I could give away. Just give a bunch of one tens away. So yeah, this is, uh, this wall that I put up is just kind of to thin out my storage of stuff. And the fact that I haven't fished a lot since having a, a daughter, 
it's kind of just been sitting around and then at the same time building up. But I do have a lot more, like, I have a ton of uh, Mega Bass 110s and Pop Maxes that I kind of collect. I kind of collect Pop Maxes. I definitely collect 110 special colors. Which is crazy because it's probably like five grand worth. Be a, it would be a cool video to do one day. It's kind of like a disgusting addiction. But I just admitted that I have a problem, and that's the first step. So another thing you could do, I'm not going to do it to these, but if like this hair is like, you're wrapping into the feather and it's pissing you off, you could just like lick three of your fingers and just, you know, go like this. And it keeps all the feathers away from you. <clears throat> if it's an issue. So this is how much feather we have left. A lot. So every feather is different, kind of like bucktail, every is different. So this one it sucks. <laughs> well, it's not terrible, but like you, I don't know if you could tell, but like it's it's kind of like I don't know how to explain it. See how it's like super thin and then it gets thick. If I tie that in, it's gonna be really thick on the bottom and super thin at the top. And these points, they're not pointy, like pointy needle looking. They look like, I don't know, they look like a, instead of like looking like a pointed branch, they're like a branch with a bunch of like cut off sub branches to it. So kind of like a cloudier look <clears throat> rather than like a spiky look. So in the past, I've, I've like thrown this whole thing away. So I could throw this away, or I could save it for something. I could probably just save it for, you know, a bottom layer for something, I guess. I don't know. Is it really worth saving that feather, or should I just throw it away, you know? It's kind of... You think you're, like, saving, but you'll see it on your desk for, like, a month. Same with this one a little bit, but not as bad. I'm going to throw away like the top part of that. But we gotta get gotta get material on this jig. Also like if I'm tying a lot of marabou, my hands get like my fingers get like a little greasy, I think, because I'm rubbing feathers all the time. If you want to do like five or six jigs and like wash your hands, it helps tying because your like finger pads will be more more tacky and you can grab the feather easier. It's true. So I'm gonna grab as much as I can off this one side and then throw the rest away. Like that's the tip of that one. explain it but it goes thick to thin instead of like tapering to thin I don't like that personal preference so there is like there's a different look so like your marabou jig could be it could have like this cloudy look with all these like tiny little branches coming out of a branch kind of look. Or it could look like all solid pointed branches, which I think look the best. So there's definitely like some crappy feathers in here. But if you tie, you'll kind of 
have a preference on what you like. So this is dreams. Also, if you want to use a feather that's not so great, but it's good enough to put on a jig, I mean, you could either put it on a bottom layer or you could put it on the bottom of the jig so it's not facing up, but for a moving bait, I don't think it matters as much. Like if I'm doing a hybrid bladed jig and I put a bunch of marabou on, like, it doesn't matter. But like on a craw jig that sits on the bottom and doesn't move, that's where I think it is more important to have that spiky look to it. Doesn't like, I doubt the bass care, but. If it makes you feel better when you're fishing, then it's important in some way. So this is the last layer done. Nope, not done yet. One more layer, but I have a perfect amount left on the stem. You grab some from both sides. So I'm finishing the feather and I'm finishing the jig. So you don't want to pinch off like too much either because sometimes the length of that, the length of the individual feathers changes. So when you're putting the jig on, when you're putting the feathers on, you want them to be the same length and not like tapering lengths while, like, while it's getting tied on, if that makes sense. So I'm just doing some hard wraps and covering up feathers that are sticking out of the thread to make it look smooth. So then, yeah, that's good. You could try to pull off excess feather if you wanted. So two flash blue pieces and a crystal flash piece cut in half. I wonder fly tires think of like how long this material should last them. I feel like for bash jigs and stuff gets used up quick. Especially deer hair. I could finish a whole bucktail on like five jig five small jigs. But I don't I haven't had an urge or craving to tie flies or fly fish because it just seems like another thing to get addicted to and like obsessed with and more crap to buy. And I just don't have the sanity for that right now. Should go fishing for smallmouth soon. Should go tomorrow. Let's go to the river, catch some smallmouth. Be cool. I don't think I have. Probably since like October, maybe. But the river was really, really shallow. So it was pretty tough. At least where I fish, I fish. I have a few spots that I fish. I don't really go to new spots a lot. So I have like my five or six spots that I go to. And like ri the river was super, super shallow. And like there used to be spots where you can fish at and you'd have to leave the spot to go find another spot because the water would be in the way, but then 
this summer, like, you could walk the entire bank. So I bank fished the river a lot. Probably more than I kayak the river. But when I kayak the river, I get more quality fish. And quantity of fish. But bank fishing is just easier time-wise and easier to clean up and pack up and whatnot. I have a ton of baits from like other bait makers that I have that I need to, that I want to fish with. And I also have a lot of like JDM stuff that I want to fish with. different techniques to try. So that was that jig. There's a even splay. Kind of hard to show. Yeah, those are good. So there's three done. I have seven to go. All good. It's nice when you're like playing a video, watching YouTube or TV. So this one, I don't have the barbs filed on this one, which is going to be okay. I have like filed them with like pliers before, but. I'll just deal with it because I think this is the only one that has the barbs full. Yep. And I like, I think a lot when I'm tying sometimes and like realize like the closer you are to the jig with your bobbin, like the more control you have. And the farther away, like you have more, I don't know why I just put, I just got the sailing hands now for no reason. I don't know why, um, what was I going to say? don't know what I was going to say. Oh yeah, the closer you are with the bobbin, like, you have more control over the, the thread. And the farther away, you have more, like, power, I guess. To tighten it. So I think it's like a combination of like control when you're far away. I don't know, it's like a it's weird. It's like how do you get better? And that's like how you get better is you control it. You have you find ways to control it more. Control it better. up trippy sticks pretty quiet pretty quiet here I can't play music I don't think because I'll get my video taken down so I'm in dead silence tying jigs sad life so my fingers are like black starting to turn black but you're gonna get that with like any brand feather you get So like I could see when people join the chat, but I obviously can't see if you leave, so I don't know if anyone's in here. But it's all good, because I will put it on YouTube and it will 
add to a library of stuff. Oh yeah, so just like this whole jig tying hobby business thing. Like I was saying, I I pulled a couple all-nighters in the last month to just try to get stuff done because it stresses me out that I have a list of crap to do. And I'm behind. So I figure, hey, let's not sleep and we can get, you know, an order done overnight. And then I'll just feel like crap the next day and just take a nap during the day. My sleep schedule will be all messed up. But I think my whole life I've just slept weird. So. <clears throat> I went into work was it two days ago. My guy at work asked me what time I went to bed and I told him 10.30 and I I got up at 10.30 p.m. and I just tied jigs all morning. And I got up at, I didn't get up, I went into work at like 5 o'clock. Yep. It'll get better. That's kind of why raising prices on everything because I mean, to slow things down and plus I need you know I need kind of a break but I hate saying no at the same time but I haven't been able to just like make stuff by myself you know, I'll have ideas to do stuff and I just won't have time to do it because I'm making stuff for other people. And I'm not complaining. That's just the situation that I'm in. But I thought it would be cool Yeah, I thought of this idea of where, like, every other month, like, I could take orders for a month, and then the next month, I just do what I want to do, and just fill my store up with stuff, just, like, different stuff. That way I'm getting a break from both things. Well, basically, when I do my own thing, it's pretty much a break because, you know, everything's at my own pace. I'm not trying to do something off of a sheet of paper I'm just you know I don't I could throw a jig head on I don't care what kind of jig head it is I don't care what color it is and then go off of that so I could just make a bunch of jig heads and then put them on my desk and then I pick one up randomly and make something that's probably the most that's probably the most fun I have doing this whole hobby just messing around and making stuff on my own time. Um, I wouldn't say making orders for other people isn't fun because it's what I offer, you know. Also, I don't know if I want to get more involved with like YouTube and stuff like that. But like I feel like the more if I do get more exposure and stuff like that where like more eyeballs are seeing my stuff and at the same time if they like the stuff that I make like it, that's just going to bring in more demand if they want it and that just puts me in a spot where I'm playing catch up more so it's nice to get exposure but at the same time it can put you in a hole if you're 
someone like me that doesn't like saying no to, hey, can you do this? Figure it out. This jig's feeling a little thin. I'm just gonna throw those feathers away. Like thick stuff. Yeah, this is like, this is like the perfect feather. It's so long. Okay. If you can't say no, make some more crops. You know what, like, in a perfect world, I'd have like 20, like 20 crops on the website at all times. Like all different colors that I've made, that I made in like my own free time. Like that would be fun to have that. Well, it's, it looks thin because the second layer is not done yet. So finish that off. But yeah, like, if, you, if I had a dream of what I would like to happen would be, you know, to have a, have a full store. You know, have a bunch of med heads made up, painted different colors and sizes, and have a bunch of craws made up different sizes, different colors of colors that I randomly made. Like, I don't want to have a color with quantities of that. I want everything to be different. And if, like, some guy, if, you, if some guy misses out on a color he wanted, that sold, that would be the time where, yeah, I'll take a custom order for you. But then it's like, I want to make, I want like a dozen of these, and then it's like, well, that's going to set me back, you know, half of a week, which is kind of how this is going because I do everything <clears throat> solo, so I'm not complaining just I'm at a point where I'm at the edge of what's possible with one person and I'm like fighting there and I keep on like telling myself that it's possible So far, I've made it happen. But I could see with, like, with, say, hypothetically, I get more ex exposure in, like, a couple of years. How, how is that going to change the demand and what I'm able to do, you know, day by day? So here's a, here's a really great looking one right here. All that's garbage to me. See ya. So this one's a little... So this one's not good enough to put as my final layer because it's going to be on the outside. But it's good enough to be the bottom layer of my next one I make. Because the bottom layer is just really what... It's like thickening... And building a body up, right? I mean, the tips show at the tail, but at that point, you'd be throwing away everything. See, this one's not ideal either, but yeah, we'll do that for the next jig, too. Here's a good one. So I know it's good right away because it's, it's fluffy and long. I'm ripping off like the matted crap on the bottom. Yeah, this is like the long fluffy stuff you could take. It's a lot easier to peel off as well. 
you have all this to, you know, comb with your fingers instead of like tiny little chunk. So yeah, tying jigs like without music on is kind of weird. Sad and lonely. <laughs> so we're almost done with the third layer. A couple chunks. Then we'll do the flash. And do it all over again. Over and over and over. So like I could fly through this stuff, but like I don't have a date to be on. What's up, Zach? Zach, how did those jigs do the, uh, the ones with the fiber weed guards? Here's a kind of a cloudy looking one. But it'll work. I'm putting it on the bottom. But it's not like a piece of crap. Piece of feather. If it was, I'd chuck it. So you could look at it like looking at the head too to see if there's like a <clears throat> a thinner corner or whatnot on the head. Which is why I did that. Sometimes you can't tell like where the layer ends. I have so much room for like thread to build that that's not even something I'm worrying about worrying about <clears throat> I could even put like a fourth layer on there if I wanted to but I think three layers is enough I mean four might make it worse who knows so two flash glue pieces and one crystal flash piece cut in half. That will be all I need for one jig. I'm gonna say that every single time I do a jig. <clears throat> Pinch the middle of a piece of flash glue and one half of the crystal flash. Tie them in together, comb it to the end, loose wrap it, and you can snug it, cut it a little bit past the hair, that's one half. So I like the layering, I think the layering is actually noticeable to me so now I'm looking for that flash of blue piece that I cut and I'd rather find it than get a new piece but not oh, found it I didn't find it so yeah I gotta cut a new piece of flash of blue <clears throat> so there's so much room on this collar left like you could almost tie in 
some like soft bucktail or some other material. You could also like layer, like how I have three layers, you could layer in like, like I'll do a layer of black and then I'll, for the second layer, I'll do the top half black and the bottom half blue or purple. And then the third layer, all black. So it's just a little bit of blue in there. And half of the blue is hidden by the uh, third layer. So it like blends really good. How do you do the ones with the tips a different color? What do you mean? Did I just answer your question with that? Need more Sally Hansen. I put Sally Hansen up on my pegboard too. I went to Walgreens and bought a couple bottles. Oh shit. So there's another. Aaron, go ahead. So far they're all pretty good. I haven't had any problems or issues with them. Pretty easy so far. All the crowd jigs is the feather hair already colored that way. Um the claws are colored that way. Sometimes, like, so here is a scrap pieces of rabbit zonker I have. <clears throat> so they're colored this way, right? Solid. But then you could buy them. Um, like this one's called, like, olive black variant. So it's olive and it's got black, black, whatever, blends in it, blended color in it. Here's another example. So here's like a hot orange croc, like rabbit zonker with black on it. So they're the, so they are that way when you tie it when you tie them in. Yep. There's some like a dog, a big chunk of rabbit fur. I didn't know I had that. So it's like, well, you can't make a claw out of that. So I saved it, but it's super, super soft, and like silky soft. So I could take, you could take like a chunk of it, like a piece of this and cut it off of the leather. And like this around the collar would look cool. I could even do it for like this marabou jig. Hopefully the guy I'm making it for doesn't mind, should I? I get risky. I'm going to. I'll, I'll give him a refund if he doesn't like it. So like the coolest thing when people order stuff is when they say, hey, can I have a dozen jigs? I don't care how you make them. Then it's basically like me doing whatever I want. That's fun. Because I'm not making like 10 orange jigs back to back to back to back. I just kind of do my own thing. Which is cool that they could trust me with that. I don't even remember if I put a bait keeper on the last one. Feels like it's been forever. Feels like it's taken forever to do one jig. Maybe it's because I'm just talking and it takes a little longer. Or maybe it just is a slow process. I wonder how long it'll be until I get 10 of them done. I have four done. <clears throat> but it's just like time consuming. It's not like I'm struggling or stressed out making these. Like, just a time thing. Papa Red, what's up?
I noticed like a lot of fishermen and a lot of bait makers are from Iowa for some reason. Like, I don't know what's going on. It's like a breeding ground. So bait keepers tied in. See how fast I tied that without just like thinking. Just kind of get lost in it, lost in the jigs. Especially if you're making a batch of the same thing. You just kind of go without thinking. So like now would be a good time to like, where to have four jigs done. Maybe another jig or two, like wash your hands so that your fingers won't be so like greasy and stuff. <clears throat> but I mean, you could tie 20 jigs without washing your hands too. So I, I saved that feather that looked like crap, but I would, I said I'd save it for the bottom layer for the next one. It's going to be fine because the bottoms are thick, but the tips, tips are still like pointy and look good. And that's all it's going to be showing. So we can salvage the stem of feather instead of chucking it, which I have done a lot of. Like if it's not like a 9 out of 10 stem, I just chuck it. But you could find other uses for it. Like I would throw pieces of rabbit zonker away because the length of the zonker isn't long enough to make a claw. So I just would throw it away. But now I put like pieces of rabbit zonker in my jigs now. little accent marks and that's perfect for it I'm still I don't know if I want to put that blue rabbit on here I don't want to like mess this stuff up maybe I'll do it on another head and then just throw that in the box just to see how it would look if you do a marabou jig with like a little bit of rabbit on the collar I'll do that on the next one so then it's like I'm taking a break, but I'm actually just tying another jig. So yeah, I, I was able to make a layer with a not perfect feather, and it's it looks fine to me. Like the tips are pointy. This one looks like shh, I'm throwing that away. It's just uneven. It's too uneven. The tips should be the same length, but if they're all like random, then it's just, I don't know, it's not, not a good look. So, yeah. So I noticed like this one has like a step in the thread instead of like a slope so I'm gonna build up the low part to slope it so otherwise you're gonna slide slide down that little cliff and all your feathers are coming down with you and it's gonna mess length up it's not a big issue it just happens Fifty degrees, dude, that's like a hoodie and pants to me. I like I like fifty to seventy for like comfort. But yeah, I guess if you're like standing in one spot it can get cold. But yeah, hopefully catch something. That'd be cool. I kind of want to go out tomorrow now that I was just like talking about it for a little bit. Maybe I just have excuses. So I'm starting layer two. Yeah, I'm not going to put that rabbit on. It's kind of like an, it's not obnoxious, but it's like a really bold 
blue. It's going to show up and probably just mess it up. Not mess it up, but it's not going to be what he wanted. I didn't ask for it, so I shouldn't do it. I have a couple marabou heads that are 332nd. They're like white with black speckles in it, but it's more of like a dark pearl look after I painted them. So this piece has some like random tips. Like not all the feathers are exactly the same length, but it's not gonna like make the jig look like crap. It's on the edge of considering chucking it though. So we're at half of a second layer to do. So this is what I got for, I only have a, a few stems left of this bag. But I'm not sure why. Maybe I grabbed the wrong batch, the opened one. Either that or I'm throwing more away than I usually do. Okay, this is two, two feathers. Yeah, but I've been like almost rushing to the post office. Like, I'll be making jigs until like 4.30 and then I'll go to the post office. I've been doing that a lot. And sometimes like getting done making an order at like 4.30 and then getting it boxed up and then getting to the post office. Kind of a weird lifestyle. So what do we got here? Sometimes you get lost in like where the hell you're you were so you're thinking about stuff. So yeah, this doesn't, I'm building up a slope again, which is fine because I got, I've been having tons of space when I finish, so I'm not worried about it building up too much. So I got one more layer. And this feather looks kind of bad. Yeah, it's not the most exciting, like, tying video, especially for, like, Saturday night, doing a batch order. But maybe I'll do some, like, maybe when I get some time, I'll get those new do-it mode colors and just try to make the coolest jig I can with those color heads. So that's pretty fun. You have like nothing to lose. You have a head. <clears throat> and then all it is from there is just like art. Like the Bamacraw color that they came out with. Like you can make some cool looking jigs with that. Like cool as in like natural looking cool. Like that's probably the my favorite. Like the Junebug one, like if you're making a craw jig, I think like a brown variant color makes like a more natural looking craw, which makes it a cooler looking craw to me. It looks more like buggy and stuff instead of like a purple and blue jig. I make like black and blue jigs a lot too because they're effective but I don't think they look as like gnarly as like a brown jig does. 
there's a piece in here that I don't want to include. So yeah, it's, it's a lot harder to manage too when your hands are not washed, I guess, after you do a bunch. Looks like you toss the first few pinches. Yeah. I'll show you on the next one why I do that. It's pretty common to do it. So it's not like a personal preference thing, but yeah, let me finish this one. Well, this is like my last pinch. And this is the next feather, so it's probably not the best example. Here's a good example. So here's like the bottom, like some of it's already ripped off, but if you could think of like, what are you going to, what are you going to use to tie on like this part right here? Like, are you going to tie it? Like, would you tie that on a jig? It's like matted and it's short. So I'm just going to rip that off. And this is a lot longer and easier to use. Some of this is like. The length is there, but it's got, it's like matted and like, got like, I don't know what that is, it's just like matted hair. So I'm gonna like rip that off. So now you got clean, long feathers to start with. Then towards the top, like right here, like the tips are uneven and it's really thin. So that all this is not gonna get used from my finger up, won't get used. Cause the length is too short. And the quality is not as good because the tips are uneven. So like that middle third of the of the stem is like the money. Which is typically the story for every stem. Ideally, but some of them are goofy looking. I'm gonna put one more pinch of this in and then we are putting flash in after it. So yeah, I've been using this vise since like September 2019. Like I don't I like it. I don't know, like let's say this vice got stolen from me, like I'd probably just keep I'd probably buy it again. <laughs> Like, I'm sure those expensive, more expensive vices have, like, perks to them, but I don't even know what the perks would be until I, like, use them. And also, it's harder to find. <clears throat> I mean, I think it's harder to find. Vices that hold hooks that are, like, three out or higher bass jig stuff a little curl cutting it off like this jit like this vice works well for like i put five out hooks in it and it works so like i don't see a reason to get to upgrade you know i don't know what those i don't know what those like fancier vices offer I don't know, like, what do those j what do those vices do better than mine? They're like five hundred dollars compared to mine. Really don't know. And they're easier, they're smoother, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I got what I need already. So yeah, so far, like, these have been pretty simple, where, like, I'm not dealing with anything that's, like, slowing me down or, like, making me fight harder. You just gotta do it. 
so so far so good and like sometimes you'll do a batch and like one or two of them will be the thread will be too high or the width of the thread wrap will be too wide and it just looks different than the other ones but so far I've had no problems being consistent with every single one I've made to where they all look the same. Usually the problems are up towards the collar. If you have problems, you're not like in the middle of the jig where you see problems. So that's like where most of the problems come are like right at the end unfortunately and that's for like every jig for like silicone jigs for hair jigs all all of those issues are typically at the head so that is my fifth jig i made and pretty good a little bit caught on the hook so i'm half done not stressing out yet. Being in dead silence for as long as it's been. Quality thing, yeah. It's just almost unusable stuff. It's too short. Plus, it's all matted up. I don't see why someone would say they would still use it, you know. Plus it has like white, white um stuff in it too. So yeah, I forgot to put the baykeeper on. I was about to put another layer of marabou on. I'm just like lost right now. <clears throat> So I just pretty much eat, sleep, and like tie jigs and go on social media and stuff, watch videos, watch fishing videos, don't watch the news. I haven't had cable in over like 10 years, so it's not like I'm feeling weird not watching news. go on Instagram and look at people's baits and jigs and stuff. Definitely like a good hobby to like you know, take time take up time. I mean, probably better being busy than bored. So this is going to be a little closer to the lead, the bait keeper, but really close to where it needs to be. Maybe I'll do an unboxing once I get my uh, tackle warehouse order. I think one of the, about half the order is from one person, one, one brand, so homemade bait maker that's on tackle warehouse. Like I have, like I can make my own jigs, but. I still buy jigs because they look like they would work well. And like JDM jigs for sure, I I still buy because I I guess I get inspiration from them and I get ideas from them and I get questions from them looking at them. 
so then I put them in my jigs. Mostly, mostly finesse hybrid jigs and finesse silicone jigs are JDM inspired to some extent. Okay. So this one is really thin. So like the closer to the top of that stem you get, the thinner your feathers are. So it's gonna make that chunk that much smaller. So you're not gonna be able to cover as much, but it's not a bad thing or anything. So yeah, I'm not like, I wouldn't say I'm like burning through a feather or not or anything. Pretty typical. So the fact that I went through 19 jigs to make to go through a bag of marabou. And this one looks like the bag's almost gone. I think I just grabbed marabou from a pack I opened already. So I can't really tell how much I've used this session, I guess is the word. But sometimes like this is good feather, but it's short. So I don't know if it's gonna be long enough. And it, it will be long enough, but I have to cut it like right next to the stem. If it's going to match that first chunk length that I put on. And I'm gonna have to tie it like really close to the the butt of that chunk that I just pulled off. So those are like the problems you could have. It's like not even a big problem. So this one I'm gonna double up. Doubling it up is a little hard, so I get a pinch, and I lay the pinch over the other side and pinch that off too. So then I have a double thick chunk of marabou to mess with. So that's going to allow me to splay it out on the jig more. So you can cover, you can cover maybe like half of the jig with that pinch. So I'll get half of that layer tied in in one chunk. So I also have like a cliff again. So I'm going to slope or raise the thread up to slope that because for sure that will at least bother me later making the next layer. Yep. So I have three feathers left of this pack, which seems weird that I would make like seven jigs in a pack, but even if I did, it's all good. Better than not being used. I'll have to do another like marabou video even though they're boring or at least keep track the next time I do it to verify that I can make a certain amount with a pack and then like this is the smallest head that I make marabou with so I'm sure the higher you know, the higher weighted heads will eat up more feathers, obviously. But I'm not making like quarter ounce marabou orders. For my Ned heads, like, like the quarter ounce Ned heads actually like kind of popular, which is kind of strange. Cause I mean, quarter ounce Ned head, what action are you going to get with the Ned bait you put on there? 
I'm not any better than anyone else, so. Just an opinion. So yeah, I live in St. Paul and like last year before it got cold out, <clears throat> I would hear like gunshots and stuff all the time. So like I'll be tying jigs and I'll, I'll, I'll hear like four gunshots or something. One day I heard like eight to ten gunshots and I was just like, yeah, that happens. At least in my neighborhood. So I moved here in 2017 for a, a job kind of promotion thing that I applied for from Madison, Wisconsin. I moved here. Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And I lived in Egan, Minnesota for like six months in like a one bedroom apartment. I had a ton of crap. I had a fishing kayak in my living room for a while. Then I obviously out, outgrew that place and rented a place in St. Paul, you know, without knowing the area because I just moved here. And like I've been here for like three years. It's not, it's not like bad. It's just like there's some areas around us that are not the best areas. I've lived in worse in college. Anyways, what rod do you throw them on? Well, you can use like a longer, I think like hair jig rods that are meant for hair jigs are like seven six, like medium or medium light. Cause you wanna be able to load the rod up with such a light, light jig. So I have OCD and I'm going to get a piece of tape and clean up some of this feather with it. But yeah, I use like a seven, I think it's a seven two or seven three medium light. But yeah, you want, I know the lure rating is like dependent on the brand of what is actually true. But you want, you know, I think, but you obviously want the lure rating low enough to where you can load the rod up enough to cast a light lure like this. And then at the same time, you'd want something not super parabolic, but I think the medium light action will give you that, you know, parabolic action for you know, a one-hot hook size like this, you know, because you're not going to be setting the hook, so there's no point in having, like, a fast rod or, um, you know, large line. You want, uh, I'd say, like, six or less pound line, you know, so it's not overpowering or controlling the, the bait, but, you know, different people do different things. I think most people just swim them, swim these in like shallow, but you could fish them all kinds of ways. You could fish them deep on the bottom, you could just let it sit there. But typically like, I actually fished them on like my drop shot rod before because my drop shot rod can throw baits this light and like I'm not carrying an extra hair jig rod around. Especially if I'm on a kayak, I'm only bringing like three rods. So in my world, I use my rods for, you know, multiple things. And I don't have a hair jig rod, but I have a medium light rod that can load up enough to throw these. So you'd want, you want distance on these. You want to launch these out. How I store materials. Are you saying storing marabou 
in particular. Um, you don't want your hooks to rust, so you'll want to either lay them out to dry, but even before you do that, you want to like squeeze the water out with your fingers before you throw it in your box, and then like leave your box open, you know, in the sun or whatever to dry out. So you wouldn't want to like fish it and throw it in your box without like squeegeeing it out, squeegeeing all the water out. Is that the word? word? Um, like I've taken an air gun before, like compressed air gun and like mainly for my craw jigs and shot it with air and it like fluffs the feathers back to where it looks like it was, it's like brand new again. That's a super long uh, feather. So longer feathers are like more forgivable for uh, handling and stuff. You just want the same length, which is why you don't want to grab too big of a chunk off because your length is going to change. But if you grab a section, most of that length is going to be the same. I don't even know, like, if I've gone around all the way. Yeah, it looks like I, looks like I have, but I'm gonna just throw another thin, thin spread out layer, just in case. You're not even gonna be able to tell. So that was like half, I did like half of the jig with just that pinch. So I thinned it out with my fingers. So that looks good. I'll do some flash. A fly box. I use my ultralight panfish rod with four pound. Yeah, I mean, it should be fine. I mean, I think you'll have good action as long as you can. I think you might be lacking in like distance, but you. You know, you're not, you should be able to, you know, work with it. I mean, I could, could cast pretty far with the panfish rod. I'm sure a walleye rod would work too, but I'm not buying a walleye rod. I mean, as long as you're having fun and experimenting and that's fun for you, then that's the right way because you could have like a thousand dollars set up, but if you're not having fun, then the guy having fun with, you know, a Zedco is, he's doing it right. I don't experiment with like rods and reels much. I kind of just accept them and like them. I don't really know of a rod I've hated. Or a reel. I, I probably had a reel I've hated before. I like I like Daiwa casting reels. But I like Shimano spinning reels. I have a Daiwa, a Daiwa Tatula, like 7-1 medium light, I think it is. I think it, it's really nice uh, finesse rod. I think it's labeled as a drop shot rod. I've used it for a drop shot rod. So that was just a random 
random fact. Uh, I like like a lot of finesse stuff. I think I'm gonna be buying more. I just bought a, another spinning rod, but that's for jerk baits. But for like my style of fishing, I I lean towards more like finesse style than like power fishing. Just because I'm comfortable with it and confident with it. That's kind of the only reason why I don't, I haven't branched out as much. And like, see, so like this would be the, like the outlier jig. Because I slipped a little bit on the thread. So the width of the thread is a little wider than the other jigs. It's pretty unnoticeable. Well, it's noticeable, but like a sixteenth of an inch wider. Why did that happen and how can I prevent that from happening? Uh, it's the height of the thread. Um, should have been higher, closer to the hook. I, I was sloping up towards the head instead of sloping down towards the head so the so the thread slipped towards the hook a little bit but it wasn't like a disaster but that's the that's what caused it you can't see what's under there but that's what happened yep so that's jig number six of our exciting Saturday night. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, no problem. Um, Shimano DC reels? Uh, not a DC reel. I've used a Karate K and I traded it for a Tatula because I didn't, like, I don't... I don't, I don't I didn't like the braking system on it. I mean, people love that reel, and people love Shimano in the braking system, but I don't know. I feel like there's an extra step when you have to adjust one of the mag like one of those feet, BBS, I think it's called. I'm more of like the die and lose braking system, you know, the outside simple braking systems and I don't feel like I'm going a step step down by going with Dyer either like I have I have you know, a couple of Dyer reels up there like the BB one from Luz I think I had that and then I got stolen from me I got a storage storage unit full of tackle, rods, and reels stolen from me. So that was an excuse for me to go buy a bunch of cool stuff. So that's why I have like, I have like all these glide baits and shit up there. But like my swim bait rod got stolen. I had a, was it like a 7 Diamond, no, it was like an eight foot, like Diamond's Fury or something. But then I got a Daiwa Rebellion 711 extra heavy swim bait rod. It's like a $80, $80 more than the Fury was. It's like a JDM styling rod. Pretty cool. I'm not sure if I fished it yet. I might have gotten it in the fall. So I was like waiting for it to be, you know, stocked. And I got a like tackle trap um, email saying it was in stock because I had a <clears throat> notification email thing set up. So I just bought it. I think I might have fished with it once or twice, but I haven't like gone out on a kayak fishing with glide baits or anything with it yet. I think I use it to test one of my 
homemade wooden baits I made. That's kind of the only time I've used it yet. But yeah, that's and like my my like daily life in my company is like solely based on like jigs and stuff. But the whole wall behind me, there's like not a jig. There is jigs there, but there's not. It's like all plastics, hard baits, and glide baits and stuff. So, so if you want to make this video not so boring, I'll show you. <clears throat> this is kind of a cool bait. It's a knockoff. I said it, but this is like the the new Agent E from Power Bait. Berkeley. So this is like the the dark sleeper. So I got let's say a 2.25 inch and a 3 inch. Um, the bigger one's a half ounce, the other one's a 3 eighths. 3 eighths is a little small for me, but should I take one out? I'll take the bigger one out and then I'll show the Mega Bass one. I think these are like eight bucks for a two pack. And I think the Mega Bass is like six bucks for one. It's interesting. It's similar to like the Mega Bass plastic, except it's not as. It seems like it's not as slick as the Mega Bass one is. And it has this weird mono, like arch we guard I don't know if my camera could like it's almost identical to the the dark sleeper um I'm gonna grab a dark sleeper and show you I got a bunch I know where they are let's see This is one of my favorite baits of like 2021. There's a bunch of them, but if we want to get the similar sized one, like, I don't know how to like, it's the same freaking bait. Except the fish is going to see a giant mono arc on top of the fish. I'll show you the tails. Like, pretty damn knockoff like, wouldn't you say? So they both have fins that stick out pretty much the same. The gill plate sticks out pretty much the same. The eyeballs are a little different. The hook eye is basically the same angle. The wire gauge hook, similar. I'm sure Mega Bass has like a custom one. Definitely looks sharper than the Berkeley one. They even have like the bottom fin, like the same. Like, pretty original, huh? So why did I buy this? I was curious and I think it'll work but yeah unfortunately I had to support them in their knockoff bait speaking of knockoff oh wait it's Berkeley again I'm just hating I shouldn't hate people Let's see what this is all about. We're not tying Maribu right now. So is this big? It smells like. It smells like plastic. Like. It is plastic. But it doesn't smell like. It doesn't stink. It smells like. I don't know how to explain it. But this is the Gilly. I wish I had the ISM version, the original version. The Gilflat, Gilflat Junior in this case. 
It's a realistic looking date. Which is cool, like oh like you could flip this around with like a five out hook, I think would be the best. So you could rig it sideways and swim it so that the fish is, you know, like a fish is swimming. And it has, it has like a hollow. So this top section's hollow. Interesting. But yeah, there's like no hook slot on the bottom. So maybe that's to like collapse easier if you wanted to put something in there. I don't know, idea. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool bait. It looks realistic, but you know. The design thing is kind of like a copycat design. I know I'm not the only one that agrees. So. How the hell did I put this in here? Oh, I see. So yeah, there's that. So I will put these away. So like, there's a half ounce one. I'm speaking for like mega bass. I like the three inch, three quarter ounce one. I don't care if it's shallow, if you're fishing shallow or not, but like I like pitching it in like grass edges and round docks. That's how I fish fish them. But I like the I like the three quarter ounce, three inch the best. The half ounce, three inch one would be my second choice. But like those super small ones, I don't really care for because I have tiny fish that like crush the three quarter ounce one, so I don't downsize. It's just extra bait that I have to get. But I also do like a modification with the Mega Bass one where I just epoxy in pieces of fiber weed guard to make it more weedless than it already is because if you throw a dark sleeper in like the edge of the pads or something or edge of grass you'll get a bunch of grass you know stuck on that hook so it's not super weedless i've also gotten them stuck in logs and shit all the time so i do like a little mod to them i have a whole case of dark sleepers that are modded i guess um, they have, they've worked for me too. I just haven't fished with them a lot. The modded version a lot. <clears throat> also made this jig. This is like a 7 16th ounce ball head. So like, I don't fish this on the bottom. But it's got red. Man, this camera sucks. It's got red feather white feather and it's got a white it's got white marabou next to the hook and it has like white rabbit fur and the head has like bleeding red rabbit fur and then i have white and silver flash skirt material on it so it's probably just gonna go boom and sit on bottom like that that sit on bottom you could still hop it around but something different with the feathers to look look good in the water yeah i have a lot of ideas but i just don't have time to make those ideas because i have other priorities here's another awesome bait spark shed with a flashy swimmer this is what happens when i start like Making baits, I get distracted and like mess around with other stuff. Yeah, I haven't messed with the DC reel before. Like, I could get like the XLT or whatever DC, but like, 
if I'm gonna get a DC reel, I'm gonna get like not super high tier, but like a higher tier one, just so I, you know, know what it's capable of, and I'm sure it's they're great. I mean, I've seen people fish with them. Yeah, I don't really mind, like, I wouldn't mind if I would fish, like, the Tatula CT for my whole life, or, like, I have SVs in the Tatula 100, and, like, I don't feel I would need to upgrade. I'm sure if I did upgrade to, like, the Zillion or something, I would probably be like, holy cow, these are awesome. But I'll never feel that way if I don't buy it. I'm probably going to buy a Vanford <clears throat> for my Mega Bass Ronin I bought. It's the only like spinning rod I don't have a reel for yet. But I'm thinking if I wanted that or the monocoque Daiwa MQ ballistic or whatever. But, I don't know, I love my Stratic CI4. If the Vanford's a little better than that, then why mess around and switch? I know why, because it's cool to experiment and buy stuff. But I think it would be a safe option. I think they're mag sealed. I think the monocoque one might be too, but... I don't know, the price difference is like 10 bucks or something. Who knows? I don't really wait for deals to pop up. I just buy it when I want to. I think we talked about Marabou as much as we possibly could. I wonder if there's anything else I'd be in the market to buy. Maybe like another finesse rod, a spinning rod maybe, just to have something else tied on so that I'm not switching baits as much. Like with the Ronin, I'm probably going to have like 110 juniors on there. And I'm not going to want to, like, switch to put a jig on there. Like, the whip snake is probably something I would might, might get. Uh, the enforcer rod for Mega Bass as well would be kind of cool for, like, finesse jigs, I think. It's seven, I think it's a 7.4. I kind of like that, that length because... When you set the hook on a fish, it's just, it's more fun with a longer rod. Like I have the Diablo Spec R, the, what is it called? Levante casting version. I think it only comes in the casting version. But I use that a lot for, um, I fish the Dark Sleeper on it. I fit, and it's versatile, so like, I could fish, uh, like, moving baits, like, chatter baits on there, but then I could throw, like, a 3 8 ounce jig on there, too, and it, all of them fish well. So that, to me, is a really, it's a pretty versatile rod. There's reviews, I'd say, like, they break and stuff, but. Maybe I'm just not catching big fish like them. I did break an arc rod last couple years ago, I think it was. Was it last? Was it last year? I was throwing a Mega Bass flap slap. And I just broke it on the cast. 
in that arc. And I don't know what arc rod it was. I think it was a sniper rod. And I broke it. They casted it too hard, I guess. But I had to pay arc like 75 bucks and they gave me a chance to replace the rod, but they, I guess, like, it was discontinued or something. So they offered me the Arc Invoker Pro, which is like a hundred and, I don't know, I think it's like a hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty dollar rod. And I got, I think I got a 610, like, parabolic medium rod. And I thought it was going to be good for jerk baits and top waters. And it probably could be, but in for me personally, I like a little faster than a medium action for jerk baits. Because I, I used to fish jerk baits a ton when I started fishing up in Minnesota because I'd fish for pike a lot. Multiple times a week, I would go out and target pike. And one of my go-to baits was a jerk bait. So I put a lot of time fishing jerk baits. And I had a, you know, like a standard seven foot heavy, or not a seven foot heavy, a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. And no, it might not have been a medium heavy. It might have been a medium, but. It was a fast action rod, and that's how I fished jerk baits forever with. So I feel like I have that feeling down with the action with a fast rod. So like when I tried fishing with the arc rod, I hated it. Like when I was jerking the bait, I felt like there's such a soft delay which might even be beneficial for the action of the jerk bait, but at the end of the day, I wasn't enjoying it. And I wasn't feeling confident with it. So there you go. I have to go back to fast action. So I got a Ronin. Um, it is spinning rod for jerk baits which I have not used spinner or sp spinning rods for jerk baits before I've always used casting if you think about it it seems almost ideal to use a spinning rod because of the drag and the you know the light wire hooks that you're using the six size six hooks that you're using or like I fished a lot of the one tens a lot, so I have so you know those I don't know what the, they're called. Are they called Katsuwagi hooks? But they're like they're prone to break and they're light wire. They're like size six. And they're like brittle, but like I feel more. I think it's a a cool idea that a spin, fishing them on a spinning rod more for the spinning reel would be helpful for those treble hooks but the thing that would always like shy me away would be the rod action of a spinning rod on a jerk bait I don't know it's just weird all the actions are similar but I guess like most of the spinning rods that I've I've fished with haven't been super high end so I think they're just like overall softer than normal but if I can get a crisp spinning rod for my jerk baits with a medium action that can bow to fish well the Ronin hopefully then I think it might work out So also the Diablo Spec R. Do I need another layer on this mofo? I think it's good. 
I think I'm just like going. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I was going to grab the Flashaboo, then I didn't because I was talking and I grabbed more Marabou. So let's grab some Flashaboo and Crystal Flash. So what were we talking about? <clears throat> I'm also talking to myself because the chat's got one person in it. <clears throat> but it's all good. I'm talking to my future viewers. Um, oh yeah, the Diablo Spec R. I, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I use it for heavier jerk baits as well. Like I could throw, you know, not like the Vision 110 is a half ounce, but I think the Spec R is kind of heavy for that. <clears throat> but you could fish like the LBOs on there. I think OSP has a jerk bait that's a little heavier than a half ounce that would work well. I think it's the Varuna. Not the Rudra. Whew. That was a sneeze, not a yawn. So if with the Ronin it would be cool. Like, I haven't thrown finesse trick baits a lot because I didn't have, like, finesse enough gear. But I think with the Ronin, I can, you know, throw 8-pound line on that. <clears throat> and fish more of those, I don't know, finesse jerk baits. Maybe some finesse cranks that I couldn't before because the rods I had... The lure rating wouldn't be <clears throat> low enough to, you know, cast those well. But with the spinning rod as well, or a spinning reel, you don't have to worry about backlashing a light lure with your reel. So we talked about some rods, talked about some reels and rods, blah, blah, blah. What else? We could talk about... I don't know, glide baits or something. So I got, as far as <clears throat> fishing with mostly the Sneaky P and the S Waver 168 was like what I mostly fished with for glide baits and my um, Fury rod. So I caught bunch of pike, catch, you know, bass, whatever, a couple musky on it, it was way too, like, big, I was, like, bringing an eight-foot rod on my kayak, it was just kind of awkward, but yeah, the Sneaky Pete and the s waiver are pretty good on entry level, I guess you could say, swim baits, it's an even, even splay on this. That is the seventh rainbow jig. What else I got? So I got a new bait sanity. What else I got? I got the affordable $35 storm glide bait. I don't even remember what it's called. But I have not been able to go out and fish those yet. I think this is the year of like get your kayak ready and just get the hell out and go fishing. Yeah, so the I do have a Varuna here, and I have a lot of stuff like on my feet that are bothering me right here. A couple jerk baits. So is this a half ounce? It is three fifths of an ounce. So yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like a little heavier than a half ounce. Like the Diablo Spec R, you know, handles this really well. Handles chatter baits really well. Um, three quarter jig works well. Not so much the half ounce, but you could throw a half ounce jig on it. I mean, I do all the time just because. 
versatility, and I kind of pushed the ratings a little bit. This has just got to be a half ounce. This is a three fifths ounce as well, so this would be what work well with the spec R as well. This is a medium diving jerk bait, Jack Levy range, the MR. So this is a little newer. It released, you know, I think several months after the the regular V range one came out. So this is like the medium diver that I don't think I've had a chance to fish with yet. But yeah, some of my favorite depth OSP. I got Mega Bass soft plastics. The Rock Hog is a really good bait. Um, some I got a Bellows or a geek a geek crack. A whole box of like geek crack um soft plastics because i bought a like special box from them that came with a bunch of crap so i have a lot of that stuff to try there's like there's like a freaking like eight inch plastic bait in one of those bags i don't know how how i will ever fish those probably a texas rig on the bottom and just hope something bites I mean, I guess people throw mag drafts. Can't be that that crazy throwing that thing. You'd have to flip it or pitch it. Yeah, so I have a couple eight-inch mag drafts and then a bunch of like little six, and one of them fell. Six-inch mag drafts. Um, in white, the new bass color. Yep. My my white one fell. So white gets bitten pretty well. I don't have shad where I fish, but I think it just the bold color shows up well, so they eat it. But yeah, I fish a lot of dark sleepers. I fish a lot of finished jigs. Drop shot, charter bait. I need to like branch out more with like crankbaits, I think would be a good thing to branch out more into. Because I'll fish with like a crankbait if I don't get bit in like, I don't know, 20 minutes, I'll like, oh, I'll get a drop shot. Start catching fish. But I was was using the that like new OSP blitz <coughs> the EXDR, the deeper one. I was catching tons of pike on it. And I'm like I took took it off because I didn't want to lose the it's like a twenty five dollar bait and I was getting bunch of like small juvenile pike eating it and like this isn't worth losing this bait for so that was a good bait yeah i have a lot of i feel like i have a lot of stuff that i want to try but it's going to take me years to be able to and at the same time as the years go on there's going to be new stuff coming out and I'm also like subscribed to the hookup tackle bento box so every month I'm getting like a bunch of like nice high quality cool JDM stuff which is like a lot of what's on that wall I still have a basement with a pegboard and my lockers full of crap I have bags full of stuff and I have a garage my garage is mostly my kayak and mold stuff, like lead mold stuff, paint. In the jig, in what jig head? In this head? Oh, uh, it's an owner, I think 5813. The 90 degree one knot. 
Yep, it's a one out. It's a one out and a three thirty seconds, which can take a size one. But this one's one out. I think I will only use one size one if like someone requests it. Otherwise, I'm using the one out. I use one out <clears throat> in my one eighth ounce. My one eighth can take a two out as well. So I use these hooks in my in my football head mold that I modified. So my football mold can take one out, two out, and three out of this hook. In the one eighth quarter and three eighths, I don't know. I like forgot that I'm tying marabou jigs. I don't know what's going on with my head. Maybe I'm just like falling asleep. My energy drink ran out. Or because I'm like making jigs in dead silence because I can't listen to music on Instagram. But I have like a guitar amp that I play music through. It's like, keeps you awake, keeps you like in the mood to do stuff. Thread for this I use, and I don't think I will shy away from it ever soon, is the Vivus, V-E-E-V-U-S, G-S-P, uh, it's 100D, but yeah, it's called Vivus, G-S-P, size 100. So there's a 100 and a 150. Both would work if I just use 150 or 100. I have 150 and that's what I use for my crowd jigs. If I'm using black thread. Which you could use black thread for black, brown, and green pumpkin. And it will look fine. But I have like green thread, red thread, pink, blue, white, chartreuse thread, orange thread. But Danville 210 denier flat wax, you have to get the flat wax, is good as well. Um, GSP just is super durable and does not break when you cinch down on it. <clears throat> but if you know what you're doing, the flat wax stuff won't break on you if you're tying marabou. If you're tying, I think it's more import, important when you're tying with deer hair because you have to cinch it down hard to like hold it in place that GSP is like really good, good uh, option. So I'm making a slope going down through the head right now so I have like a cliff going on people that are like fly tires like what the hell is this guy talking about just like my own way of seeing things I just see like the jig is like a canvas with like hills and stuff I'm painting it with hair depending on the type of jig and the mold your canvas can be so deep anyways second layer I think needs one more pinch no so I tied the second layer like really close up to the first one so it looks like the second layer is not even there but it is I'm just going to put in a really thick third layer here, because I have room for it. <clears throat> yep. These feathers aren't the best that I'm seeing here. So this is some matted crap. <clears throat> Pulling off. 
my fingers are like it's weird it's like they're not they're not greasy or like sweaty or dry they're just like they feel like they're just dirty and they're kind of it's harder to like rip the feather when you're like combing it but it's not a big enough problem where you need to stop If I wasn't like on live, I would just wash my hands like every few jigs. My fingers get super grippy afterwards. It just feels like I was playing in dirt and didn't wash my hands. That's kind of how it feels if you tie with marigou for a while. And like the dye. And the marabou will get on your fingers, but I don't think that means the quality is bad. It's just part of how it works. I'm sure there's oils and stuff in your hand that make that happen. Is Instagram going to let me post like a freaking three hour video of tying marabou? I don't know if there's like a cutoff. Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like if I was doing this during the daytime, like watching videos and like having music on and stuff, like it, I guess it just feels like it goes by quicker. But when you're sitting in silence talking to yourself, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It kind of takes a long time. It feels. It was a good feather to get a lot of material out of. So yeah, it's like, it doesn't take all night to tie tiny marabou head, but if you like talking and messing around, it might, an all night meaning a couple hours, a few hours. And honestly, probably takes, you know, five to eight minutes a jig, if that's all you did, nonstop, which it seems like that's what I'm doing, but talking and messing around a lot. Like it's not, it's not like a stressful tie. You just have to be, you know, as you just know what you're doing with the material and not going too fast. <clears throat> just don't rush it and it's, all it is is time. Probably let my dog out, get some food. I have two more jigs after this. Maybe I, I don't know if I want to continue the video or stop the video. Or my next two jigs, I could just like throw music on and like go back to my normal life. <laughs> Your eyes get tired of tying. Oh, I'm not really. I mean, I'm either tired or I'm in the mood. I'm not tired. It's just like... Yeah, GS... Like, I didn't even... I was using Danville 210 for a while. And I still use it. But, um... Once I tried the GSP... It felt so smooth, <clears throat> and 
it was strong. And like, I tie bash jig, not flies. So I'm using more material on a bigger hook, so it just makes sense to use it. I'm using like deer hair on a lot of the stuff I use too. Not hollow deer stuff, like the, the body hair. So you kind of need that to cinch down hard on to get the hairs to stick up when you cinch down where Danville it's possible to do it obviously but you have you get you know there's like one percent more nervousness you get like you you think about it breaking when you're when you're tarring with that but I mean you almost could just use it for everything the 210 stuff And I run out of GSP and I use Danville <clears throat> Black. So D so this GSP crap, they only have it in black and white. So like, if I want to use another thread, I have to use the. I always I always use the two ten in a different color. If I wanted to use brown or olive or red, I have to use. The Danville 210 because Beavis doesn't have it in the GSP. Beavis does have different colors, but they're in different threads that aren't gel spun and like lay flat as well as this does. Yeah, they have like a lot of like numbered codes and stuff on their threads. Like most companies do, I have no idea like what the hell this stuff means. So like I'll try the stuff and not like it, so then I just won't buy it again. Also like uni thread, I don't like uni thread. I don't know if it's because I'm spoiled, but I feel like it's, I don't know, I just don't like it. I think I tried 140 and didn't like it, so maybe it was just too thin. Diameter. So yeah, I'm liking the, the I'm liking the uh, layering on the marabou. So not the tips aren't all the same length. The slight, slight taper. So let's see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight marabou jigs tied. I got two more. Ten of them. Yeah, I know like some some people that tie like all day long. You're bobbing gums up. Yeah, usually when I get I don't know if it's gumming up or if it's the thread, like like one piece of thread could split and like get caught in this like part right here. Or it could get wrapped around just like one of these pieces of strands. I don't know how many strands there are. Let's say it was 20 and like one of the strands can get caught in here. So it feels like really crappy when you're <clears throat> tying with it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot more fun when you're like... <laughs> it's a lot more fun when you're not live because it's so dead quiet when you're tying weird but that's how it's gonna be maybe like if I had a big audience and there was like a lot of like stuff going on like questions and stuff I'm sure it would feel like more exciting than like me talking to myself this whole time <clears throat> but Like, I figured I would just do this because I could do it live and just have, like, a marabou tying. Like, I have a whole freaking marabou tying session, like, that I could save. 
so like I could refer to it sometime. It's just like a library. I could do like, oh, I really want to do a deer hair show. But like, I don't know like what else to do for content besides like, well, I'm boxing a bunch of cool stuff or you know, obviously I just did the Marabou video. Like I can't really do like a Ned head video. I have some Ned heads here, but I just tie a bait keeper on it and that's all. Um, the crosshair jigs, I guess I could do like more of those. It'd be cool to do like <clears throat> challenges. Like I have to make like a red and blue head and then like somehow make a jig out of that using either make a craw hair jig out of it or a hybrid jig out of it and I have to somehow make that look realistic with like a red and blue head or something weird challenge like that or like a chartreuse head like we have a chartreuse head and how can we make a cool jig out of that without it being obnoxious. And one of my favorite <coughs> skirt colors is just ch ch chartreuse for a jig, for a finesse jig. <coughs> Speaking of finesse jigs, after I tie this piece in, <coughs> this is a tungsten little spotty jig from Picasso. I bought a couple of these when I was in St. Louis, but I remember, uh, I've noticed that the silicone on this jig is like super, super thin. And I've been looking for this stuff for like my finesse jigs. But like, I don't know where to find different colors and different patterns of super fine silicone. Like where the hell do you find that? But that's like this, that's the stuff you want for finesse stuff if you're tying like one eighth quarter ounce jigs, that stuff's super nice. I know like OSP makes a finesse jig. I'm just thinking about what I'm doing. Getting feathers. <clears throat> OSP makes a finesse jig and they use like thicker, um, thicker diameter silicone than normal. And it's a finesse jig, so it's kind of different. it's laying around somewhere around here. So yeah, challenges would be cool. Or if you had like a community challenge of like in the next week everyone should, needs to make like an orange and purple jig or something and then have like as many people that want to do it make it you know submit it with a hashtag and then randomly get drawn <clears throat> to win something I don't know it would be cool collaborations and you know contests that not necessarily reward the best jig but you know you participate and you get drawn if you participate but you have to make the jig that is called out or whatever you know, have fun have fun with it I don't see a lot of like fun stuff in the jig world not much you can do as far as like competitions and stuff. Like Do It did a kind of a jig competition, but everyone voted on what they liked the best. So it's like if you did one where as long as you participated in it, 
like you would be in a drawing so like anybody could win as long as they participated in it i don't know because then it's not then it's not so much a competition it's fun you know what do i know i just tied jigs on saturday nights <clears throat> Is anyone else tired of Maribu? I think Maribu's like, it's gonna come on strong as far as like fishing companies and jig makers and stuff. I mean, as in the last year, it's been, I mean, I follow the, like, the community pretty close. it's I mean it's come on pretty popular but I feel like this ceiling for it is so much more you know like Beast Coast you know introduced like the little hustler jig and it had a piece of marabou in it and it's like changed the game or whatever like what's next then like what's the next level like what else can be done <clears throat> no but is it unique is like marabou on a jig even like unique anymore i don't know what what would be the next big thing i don't know what the next big thing is but has the marabou even reached its you know potential yet I swear I don't talk to myself when I'm making jigs by myself. <clears throat> can talk about line. I use seven pound sniper on my drop shot. I actually like when I fish jigs, I use 14 pound um, Yozuri top knot, actually. It's super affordable, and I have not had issues with it. And I don't know why I got it. Maybe it was on sale or something. But it's like, I like it. I'm not <clears throat> doing braid to leader, so I'm not spooling my entire reel with the top knot I'm just using it as leader and I use 14 pound for most of my jigs mostly at the highest I'm fishing like a quarter I'm fishing a half ounce at like the heaviest weight when I fish I would say three eighths is like the most common but I tend to go lighter than I do heavier with jigs And I typically fish jigs more if I'm targeting smallmouth than largemouth. You know, it changes all the time. Let's see what we got going on here. Glad Kuda had you on live. You make some fantastic jigs. Thank you. Yeah, some people like watching just people tie. Like, people on YouTube and stuff. I mean, it's a lot more fun, like, on Jig Squad, obviously, because it's just, like, no, like, there's no back and forth, you know, conversation. It's just me chilling at home. But, yeah, that was a fun show. Um, that would be cool to, like, not know what the hell you're doing, and then have someone like call out a type of jig and you have to make it on the spot you know that would be cool 
anything different. I'm not like repetitive or like just fun. Like I wanted to tie like I would like it would be cool to go on live and just tie with like new materials that I've never touched in my life and like try to make something cool out of it. Like stuff like that would be cool. Like I just bought some feathers from like what did I buy those? I got them from Hobby Lobby, like a like a mixed bag of orange and black feathers. Like I don't know how the hell I'm gonna use these, but you can make a challenge and say you have to use these. Find a way to make it work. Kind of thing. Like that's what's fun to me, like like the whole process of it you gotta enjoy the game not the trophy fine cut silicone yeah I'm, I don't know I wonder if you just go to like one of those fish skirt websites if they have like a fine skirt section probably like exists and there's probably like a ton and I'm just sitting here like I can't find it so yeah I'm making my freaking marigold jigs slow as hell but I'm not like I'm really like paying attention to them I'm not like making them and not thinking even though I felt like I was earlier but Like, as long as you go slow, like, nothing can mess up. And I'm not, like, in a rush to get to the post office or a rush to go, like, pick my kid up or something weird. I got nothing to do. No plans. I wonder if there's people, I'm pretty sure there's people ice fishing here. I went ice fishing once, this whole season, because I've been freaking tying jigs so much. Oh, it feels a good day. Keeps you hungry for next, <laughs> next year. Can't wait. I'm not complaining, I'm just like, sarcastic a lot. I feel like making jigs for people. I do it I probably wouldn't be doing it anymore after doing it for two years if I didn't like it has it been two years has it been more than that all right is this my third layer yeah this is my third layer so like I can't imagine like running like I could probably run through these and make them click and you know whatever but like imagine looking at them afterwards and I think it's it's worth it to like make it look as perfect as you can because why not <clears throat> why even do it big box stores. I get it, it's the money, the money in business part of it. Yep. If you're just joining, I've been tying freaking marabou jigs for like, I have no idea, has it been two hours? And I, only have like 10 marabou jigs to do. So I've been like talking and like showing crap. But we're not stressing, we're not uh, struggling at all. It's just cruising. Hanging out in dead silence while I'm making marabou jigs. Talked a lot about marabou jigs. 
some like marabou material at the beginning. Everything you need. I think we've gone through most of like the techniques. It will be a good uh, video to refer to if anyone has like marabou tying questions. I could be like, look at my video, dude. It's like three hours long. So like I fold, I don't even know if I said it, but I fold the, uh, fold both of those pieces in half so that there's two flash shabu pieces and two crystal flash pieces on one side. But yeah, I, I have them coming out of the thread as, all as one piece and then they splay out like as they, you know, leave the thread. Instead of like having gaps, it all comes out as one solid chunk of stuff. Yep. Chunk of stuff. Yeah, I feel like a, a deer hair video would be like way more. Not confusing, but there's a lot more like into it. Like marabou, there's a couple of things that can be <clears throat> different, but deer hair is just like a whole nother freaking material. It's like nothing similar. And like, what else is there? There's rabbit. Rabbit, you just cut a, you know, cut a piece of rabbit off the hide, <clears throat> and then shorten that to the length you want it to be, and then tie it in normally, like tie it in like you're tying this, <clears throat> but you're tying in like a little short piece of hair instead of a long feather. Nothing like too complicated about it. Once you get into like feathers and like schlopping and hackle and stuff like that, <clears throat> there's probably more techniques. But that is not something that I do a lot on my products, so I don't really have a lot of um, opinions about it. So like I don't really talk about it. So that's all I have to offer. I use it sometimes, but I wouldn't try to teach somebody anything about it. At least with Mirabu, I feel <clears throat> I feel comfortable like giving tips away because I feel like I've done enough to kind of know what the hell I'm doing, you know. So there's that guy. Pretty good. What do we got? One more marabou jiggle up, guys, and we took us an entire night to tie ten of them. Just kidding. We're going. We're going slow. I'm not rushing it at all. My energy drink ran out. My dog's just probably like, why is he talking to himself for so long? So fun fact, <clears throat> I've been using this same spool this entire time, so it uh, it lasts a pretty long time. I mean, I got my money's worth, I think, out of it, out of the thread. <clears throat> so I had, I can't tell like how much marabou I used, but I will try to figure that out next time I have a batch of marabou like 10 I'll try to um see how much feather I use up because one time I tied 19 
And then this time I tied like six and I ran out. But I don't know what bag I was grabbing it from, so I could have just messed up with that. It's the same size head I was using before too. See, I'm trying to put marabou on here. I'm supposed to put a bait keeper on there. That's just how like, lost I am. But I don't think I've messed up a bait keeper. I don't think I've like skipped it. So I took out like three bags of marabou, three spools of this GSP 100. <clears throat> So like I would be ready for this video, I'm not even going to be done with one of the spools or have to open a second bag of feather. I'm like losing my mind I think, I'm like what am I doing, like why am I tying this thread to this hook? <clears throat> I don't even know what the hell this is called, like what I'm doing to tie these like cinch knot things. I don't even know what it's called. I know what a whip finish is, but I don't know what that thing is called. I'll just do it. So I don't have to cut the tag end off of this because I tied up to it. So I guess it's kind of like a way to get out of cutting it is to tie to it. So since we're tying with, like we're tying marabou on this jig, this like lead, you know, <clears throat> and there's a barb there, that barb won't be used for plastics. So that's why I'm putting those hand tied bait keepers in there and it's a marabou jig so it's kind of like an optional thing to put plastic even though I would probably recommend it for weight I don't fish I hear like a marabou jig much like I tie hair I tie crawd hair jigs or whatever, and I call them hair jigs, but like most people call marabou, do most people call marabou jigs hair jigs? I doubt it, because it's not hair. They must be talking like bucktail or something. I don't know. When someone says hair jigs, I feel like marabou is like what they mean. This is what happened when you're like <clears throat> talking to yourself for so long, you just don't make sense. It's fine, I can talk to myself all night. <clears throat> as long as it's like jigs and like a video that I could like look back on or like refer to. This video is like gonna disappear after it's over. It'd be like a waste. I could have just like listened to music and like got up and ate and stuff <laughs> between making all these. So yeah, my my back got super s screwed up tying so much. So I'd actually like get out of my chair and like get on my knees and tie sometimes. But the problem is, is like you have to like lean your back into the jig when you're tying. You're not like sitting back and tying with your arms out. So over time, your back, or at least my back, has gotten jacked up from it. So I got like a massage chair. 
in my chair right now. But I can't use it like while I'm tying. I have to like take a break and use it. It's not even to be cool, like I have a massage chair, right? like a massage thing on this. <clears throat> like I got it because I like needed it to like um, massage myself. So yeah, like tying jigs. I'm not saying it's like physically hard, but I wouldn't think it would be easier with age. But I guess young, younger people could have like back problems too with the tied. <clears throat> but yeah, comfortable chair is important. I think the height that you're tying is important. I don't even know. This is the height of my desk. That's kind of how I have to be, but my chair doesn't adjust up or down, so I kind of stuck here. I'm sure there's like a proper like height to tie on, to tie according to like your body, but I don't know what the heck that is. So like if I don't know if I'm on my second or third layer, which I should, but I'm like spacing out. Just make a, a thick third layer. I think I am on the third layer though. So make it extra, extra thick, and by extra I mean like five percent thicker. It's not going to like look fat. <clears throat> Yeah, as far as like if you're if you're like a beginner or something and you want if you either haven't fly or well if you haven't like tied before or if you wanted to tie your own marabou jigs to like save money or something or if that's what you fish a lot um I think it's you would have to use them up I think if you want it if you want to get your money's worth out of it and time worth out of it or if you enjoy doing it then it would be worth it too that yes that this is this is black black hairline extra select marabou i'm making 10 marabou jigs this is my 10th one and blue black and blue flash with it So at the end of every one, I'm putting in a little bit of blue flash on each side. My dog's pissed at me. Um, yeah, and I'm kind of like, this is my last jig, so now I'm going to be like sad that there's nothing to do. I'm going to have to like go pour lead other orders done. I actually have a bunch of stuff poured for other people but I haven't painted the stuff yet. I don't know what time it is right now but I guess it's an option. But like I guess tomorrow's Sunday so I can mess with that stuff tomorrow. Yeah, it's been like super quiet and like kind of boring to be honest to do this on live. It's probably that I don't have a lot of followers and stuff, but maybe I could get more people, like as in like more people join the stream, not so much the chat, but like have other people in it as well to talk to instead of me maybe have like two people like making jigs or something at the same time because like if you're making a live with jigs you're kind of limited on what you can do for content and like i'm not even like concerned about having content really but i 
think this can help people maybe and it's I don't know something different for me to do instead of just posting pictures and stuff maybe like some kid out there really wants to tie marigou and sees this video and thinks it's easy and he can do it himself that maybe that makes him buy his own mold who knows maybe you're like 70 year old wanting to get back into tying and you don't want to get into it because it's like overwhelming I'm really not see like I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore I'm just like making noises with my mouth now <clears throat> so we're just gonna put a little bit of extra marabou on this one because it's the last one. Oh yeah I can make I forgot I, I'm gonna make another marabou jig after this and it's gonna be with like a gray or a white colored head off-white colored head I'm gonna put a little bit of blue rabbit zonker on it just so I could like show you what the heck I'm like talking about instead of saying oh you could do that I'll show you how to do it I've never done it but I can do it it's the same thing it's like you have thread space with no matter what type of jig you're tying they all have that collar thread space in common see so I have this extra it's not a bad feather but like I'm not gonna use that so literally you know so two flash blue strands and one crystal flash strand cut in half and this will be the last of this order then I'll make up one of those goofy rabbit ones so I still have like a lot of feather but I'm also using like one and a half packs so I, I mean for tying a lot of these I'm not it I don't feel like I'm burning through these what am I doing I'm grabbing feathers dude I'm supposed to be putting flash on here <clears throat> so my brain is slow I think it's uh I think it's just tired brain not being stimulated enough <clears throat> So here's one half of the flash. I'm gonna cut it through. And for the other half, I'm gonna put Sally Hands in it, and then we'll be done. So I think. For all future Marigou jigs, I'm going to charge six fifty for them each because I feel like I mean I've been doing this for like two years or something with my prices at where they are, so it's not like I'm concerned about the profit as much, but I feel like there's a noticeable demand for stuff and it's easy for me to get behind being just me so I think I I raised the prices back in like like March 1st I did um, they used to be like 450 and I changed it to 650 because otherwise I'm just gonna get too many orders and I won't be able to keep up so that's kind of the reason for that more than like oh I can make more money or something but like I kind of had to do it 
because <clears throat> of like the stress and stuff. Like, because I'm gonna say yes to a lot of people. But then I get backed up, and then it becomes like I become sleep deprived and stressed out, and it's just not good. I should, you know, enjoy it more. But I'll sacrifice a little bit. You know, be like that. Thanks for hopping in, Brandon. This would be the last jig of this. Ten. So, nine of them are like perfect. One of them, I had a little bit of slide on the thread, but Sally Hansen and uh, do her magic on that. I don't know. I still have another marabou jig to tie, a special one. Here's a, this is a worm nose mold that the lead didn't cover all the way on the shank, so I cut that piece off and then I turned it into like a double bait keeper ned, ned head. Kind of cool. <clears throat> Here's a couple trebles I tied and I had them in my basement for like I don't even know, like a year or something. Some cool troubles. Feathered troubles. These are like a side. These are like freaking. I don't know if they're MS Slam or big, but they're like a size. It's like a size one hook. Pretty big hook. Um. So let's tie up one more marabou jig and I'll end the video, but I'm going to tie up one more. And this is, I think, pearl. No, this is like some pepper color. It's like a gray with black flake in it. I have no idea. It's going in. <clears throat> so this one I'm going to tie blue, blue rabbit on because... I thought about it, I haven't done it, and I said I would, so I'm going to do that. So most of the steps are the same, except the collar I said I was going to put rabbit on, because I found that random piece of rabbit fur in my Ziploc when I was showing someone that zonkers come in different colors, then I got the idea that I can use that for a collar on a marabou jig because I thought it looked shiny and cool. So look where we are now. After this, I'm going to eat and get some drinks in me. But yeah, I made this pegboard. I put the pegboard up and put everything on it. Like at 5.15 I got done and I started the stream at 7. But before, it was just like an ugly ass curtain. No offense if you're watching this and you designed that. And I was from the 60s or something. Probably not funny. <clears throat> but yeah, it, I thought it would make the streams more, you know, fish like, lure like. And at the same time, um, thin out my locker, my basement pegboard. Um, there's no hair or tying materials at all on that wall. So I wanted to keep my locker strictly like all vice tying stuff instead of like being so mixed up. And like most of my I don't even know, like, probably half, half of that stuff was in my basement and half of it was in my locker, but I freed up, you know, I freed up all that's on that wall out of my freaking locker and basement, so it gives me a little more room to organize stuff, but I'm going to get another desk and I'm turning this this space, at least in the temporary, into like a freaking massive freaking tying 
business freaking room. And it's gonna be like super organized. Right now it's a, it's a freaking hideous mess. Like I stage things like on the floor. So like if I'm looking for something, like some of the things are on the floor and I'll look on the floor for it. Like I shouldn't be doing that. <clears throat> I'm like, I keep on overgrowing and overgrowing, which isn't a terrible thing, but I just need more space. Also, like, if you post a YouTube video that's, like, three hours long, like, who's gonna watch that? Like, weird. Like, I don't even know if my mom would watch this for three hours. But, why do I care? <clears throat> you know? there's like a proper way to like work the algorithms to get the best out of you know whatever I don't really care <clears throat> like I like followers on Instagram are like you can get followers with like robots and shit I just like purged my followers I took like 300 followers out of my followers because they weren't real people. <clears throat> Almost done. That's what my brain's telling me. doubling this up it's really thin my fingers are super freaking black and like gross yeah it seems like wow you could sit and I freaking jigs for three hours it seems like it's a lot more fun when you're like playing music and stuff uh, let's see. I kind of been leaving the crappier feathers like it's an extra select pack but like it's all garbage You can't expect them all to be nice. Because you're asking a lot at that point. But... So we're running out of thread. Maybe we'll run out and I can show you what happens when you run out. Losing myself here. It's honestly because it's just been dead quiet for so long. That's probably why I'm just like turning into a zombie. It's not because the time. <clears throat> it's just the silence is just killing me. Yeah, so this feather is not long enough to use. And only a tiny bit of this is. Hopefully, like, tying for this long, using, you know, marabou for this long, can give a decent idea of what happens when you tie feathers. And 
maybe answer questions for people. And if not, it's just a experiment. Yeah, I'm like really talking to myself now. So this is the last, the last jig I'm making. I'm almost out of decent feather out of this pack. I got tons of feather, so. And I might, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run out of thread by the end of it, so. So I just put a bunch of wraps down because I wanted to bring up, you know, bring the slope up, if that makes sense. So I threw that piece away because it was too short. I don't Palmer for Malibu. I don't even know, like, I know how, but I don't know, like, I don't think it would look better. I mean, I'm going super slow and thoughtful and, like, I know where everything is, so I don't know, like, how it can be better. Yep, I ran out of thread. I'm going to try to use most of it. stab myself <clears throat> cut this piece off see there's like some access here you could keep this to tie well I'm not going to but sometimes you could keep it for like tying a couple bait keepers before you want to like chop it you know what's up Canadian baits making baits tonight you're just hanging out definitely my last jig I'm gonna make I can barely freaking think. So I do have to get thread, but for some reason I wanted to pick this feather up and take out stuff that was bothering me. So I'm doing that. <clears throat> so if you've never seen thread put on a bobbin, this is how it works. You get a thread, what is this even called? Uh, a threader, I think it's called stick it through the bobbin. This is a Loon brand one, I think. And you take the tag end of your thread, of your new spool, push it through this hole in the threader. All you do is pull the threader through. <coughs> I mean, might think that's obvious, but I definitely didn't know how to do that when I started. So I have like a kind of a knot going on up here. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of super glue down because I, you know, changed my thread. And if I didn't put super glue on, it probably wouldn't matter, but we're going to do it because it's peace of mind so we're doing that so I'm gonna tie this new spool in so you're tying on top of the super glue too so you don't have to like glue this now so I think we have room for another layer another layer of marabou and then we'll try that rabbit stuff yeah we're gonna do we're gonna do three layers I could just go straight to the rabbit but why rush things when you're already tired as hell? 
and you've been talking to yourself for two hours. <clears throat> Might as well go go all the way, right? So you could like even purposely make the thread wrapping wider so then you get you know, you get the room that you want for the rabbit, even though no one does that. <clears throat> but in this case, that is something that you could do. Does anyone tie rabbit on the collar of a marabou jig? I'm sure it's been done. I don't think it's like common though. It might help with like a little bit of color contrast, like a little bit of red would look cool. Or even, I don't know, maybe black would look cool even just to give it a little different profile. a little too deep for me. I'm just kind of like seeing what can be done. I don't really care about that stuff. Almost done. So this one's a little more wispy. Like you could splay it out with your fingers and then lay down a light wrap and then just tight like you know you can do harder ones afterwards. That's some good feather. Super silky and soft. My dog needs to go out. Let's go. Big chunky chunk right there. Splay that out. It'll be on uh, rabbit mode like that. So lightly, I'm just putting the thread down until I like that's where I want this to be. And then you can tighten. If you tighten it right away, it will slide. I'm actually going to put one more piece of marabou there because I see kind of like a gap. It's a huge gap. I'm just saying it's small. <clears throat> um, of course, I'm left with like the crappiest pieces. I don't want to open a new bag, but I might have to. Yeah, so this is funny. So like these are extra select, right? They're selected. I got like, these are like, eh, they're oh, they're not even okay to me. I'm gonna throw all these, these are all garbage. I'm not using those. <clears throat> Same as this one. Like, eh, I'll just throw it away. Even though, okay, here we go. We have a chunk, a section I could probably use off of this so I'm going to use that just to finish because all I need is a pinch to finish this jig I don't really like this quality but I'm not like selling this jig I'm just like doing a stupid experiment with rabbit this is going to be a thick one I feel like with all this marabou, it would look good swimming it. But like if it was sitting still, I don't know, it would look kind of dumb. See, so I felt my thread slide, which is scary because I need to put some freaking rabbit fur on there still. So I was able to like back off and save it from doing that, which isn't. You know, fun. Now I gotta be super careful, otherwise this whole jig's gonna freaking collapse and the world's gonna end. So you gotta be careful. So this is the hair that I thought looked cool. So all I'm gonna do is 
you know, cut a piece off the leather and tie it in, but I don't want to get too thick of a piece. And all this is to, all the reason I'm doing this is to like, see if I can do it. Like, I have like, there's no reason why I'm doing this. It's just I want to see what it looks like and if it can be done. It's going to be tough because I'm like walking on ice with this thread. So with this, it's super, super soft. Not that marabou isn't, <clears throat> but you could put a light layer down and like push your finger into it and it will splay that rabbit crap around. And like my instincts tell me to like wrap, wrap it and cover that blue up, but I'm gonna not do that. So I wanna save height on that thread. <clears throat> I might be like the only one that like thinks that way. I don't know. It's like you're giving out bad advice, you don't know. really sketchy so of course like the one that I wanted it <clears throat> that I wanted to not be so high is the, the one the uh, if there's one jig I didn't want to have high thread on it would be this one and this is the one with the worst but we might be able to pull it off see so this chunk is just not good I'm not as satisfied with that one. So I'm going to cut the hair right out of like, just right out of the middle, not even along the leather, because it has more like spiky tips on it, and the other one didn't. So there's like spiky tipped, and then there's like cloudy, clumpy looking hair. Yep, effed up. It like collapsed on me. But we have one piece left, and we might be able to. I mean, we're not gonna be able to save it; like it's dead. <clears throat> but um, we can get an idea of what it would look like. It just won't be perfect. See, I already knew. I knew it was coming. When it happened, I was not surprised. I'm gonna do one of these. So I'm going to finish this off and be careful to not make it worse than it got. I mean, I've done this a lot, like trying to save a jig. Save a jig. Um, yeah, so we'll definitely, it's not perfect at the collar. Like the, th the thread width is so is a little wider than I want. Honestly, du like double of what I would want. And when you're cinching down your final cinch, <clears throat> you don't want to cinch hard because otherwise that, all of that's going to slide. <clears throat> so now I want to use Sally Hansen on it and lock it up.
Dude, it's 11 o'clock. Did I start this at 7? No way. Four hours, dude. Yep, definitely my last, my last jig. Keep calling me. So I'm gonna put this on a hemostat thing. Or this, this pliers. So I put rabbit on the collar. That was kind of the only experiment for that. I just wanted to see if I can do it and what it would look like. I guess it might, like, it kind of, like, cups the marabou a little bit. So maybe, like, if, you pa if you're swimming this and you pause it, it might not stop and splay out as much when you stop it. But, you know how it, like, kind of cups, cups the marabou? I don't know. <clears throat> I wanted to see what it would look like. Um, in like the shorter lengths, it looks kind of cool, but I didn't tie this one the best, so maybe in the future we'll do it again, but for now it's just, you know, a random jig that I'm going to probably hang up and never fish. But yeah, knowing that it's been four hours, I should probably, uh, yeah, call it a, call it a night. And no, it doesn't take four hours to tie 10 marabou jigs, but it's just been a long stream. But yeah, thanks for joining, and I will put this on YouTube if you missed, you know, the beginning or whatnot. You can watch it there, or if you could watch, I think you could watch it on Instagram. I don't know if it'll take four hour freaking videos, but yeah, dude, I'm tired, and I'm talking too much. Bye.